morning and welcome to St. Michael's. Our opening hymn this morning is number 549, Come Christians, Join to Sing. Please stand as we begin our celebration this morning. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us ask God for blessings and forgiveness as we celebrate this sacred mystery. You cause sinners to repentance. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive our sins, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are at the right hand of the Father interceding for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us all. May He forgive us our sins and grant us life everlasting. founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal reward. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy. To our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways is my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified by my body, whether, it be, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do, know, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a land owner who went out and down to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the land owner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you two go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you to go into my vineyard when it was evening the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman summon the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and ending with the first when those who had started about five o'clock came each received the usual daily wage so when the first came, they thought that they would receive more. And, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the land owner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be the first, and the first will be the last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Are you envious because I am generous? So asks the man, the landowner today. And that's our reflection this morning on envy. Envy is one among the seven vices that we have in our own catechism. And in fact, when you open the catechism, it's envy that is on the top of the list. And in explaining envy, it begins with explanation of envy and then closely, closely is jealousy. So as to bring our attention and deepen our understanding of envy. So to make it short, our understanding of envy is that simply because I become bitter, maybe perhaps because someone's life is better or someone has gifts, talents that I do not have. So I am not happy about that. It's not sometimes it's not that I am going to have that, but simply because the other person has it. And then jealousy. If we go with our own catechism with possession, that I want it, I want to guard what I have jealously, I possess it. So I must say that it's in that respect that the Bible says God is a jealous God because he will not allow us to go into idolatry, to share his glory with others. Idolatry. St. Thomas Aquinas, in trying to explain envy, the vice of envy for us to understand how it goes. Thomas Aquinas situates it in a way. 
He says it's the same place where you find love. Envy can be found. It's in a human way. And what happens is love now pushes you, which is the basic, which is the basic of what it means to be a Christian, pushes you to love that person the way that person is, with the gifts that God has given to that person. And on the other hand, envy will make you to go out to destroy those gifts. So envy takes us to the opposite direction of love. While love makes you to, makes you to show that kind of goodness, to, to be able to be good and have good will towards other people, then envy will make you to have bad will and ill will towards others. Then the master in the parable today would ask, are you envious because I am generous? Are you envious because God has blessed the other person with that particular gift? The first reading of today tells us about the nature of God. God is generous and God is good. And God does things that God would do, not as human beings would do. And then it concludes that God's words are not our words. And he's a generous God. And because of that, we pray today that even though there are certain things I would like to have, even if I don't have, God can see out of generosity, bless me with those gifts. So we keep on striving, but never to go out to destroy someone else's gift or to destroy somebody simply because I want it, the person's life may be a bit better and then I become bitter and resentful. And then the second reading of today, St. Paul says, for him, his life is total submission to the will of Christ. And what is the will of Christ? Christ is the same person who loved us so much that we'll be able to give his life for us. And Christ not only loving us, but Christ continues to love us. And Christ wishes good for all of us, for everyone. And that's the Christ that we have come to proclaim today. So that Christ will not allow me to wish bad on someone, to have ill feelings towards other people. Our catechism will remind us that when we go into envy, we become envious, which means we lack self-love. We don't love ourselves and the work we have and the gift. And it leads to what? It leads to lack of contentment, and we don't find peace then we begin to go into unhealthy competition with other people. A rivalry that is uncalled for. That's how the kaikism will teach us. Our kaikism will explain envy to us. So we have come here today to pray to God for love in our own way, so that we have good way towards other people and not to have ill way. Even when they are flourishing, we too, can flourish. We don't need to destroy what the other person has before our lives can become better. In looking at St. Thomas Aquinas on virtues and vices, Thomas Aquinas will make a summary of four points on how, how not to be envious. That it begins in the human way. Then he explains that there are four things that we ought to constantly keep in mind and remind ourselves of. The first one is that you should only look at people and know that God has created us differently and uniquely. That's your say. People are different. People are different. And because people are different, there is no way you will be able to do exactly what the other person does. Even if I learn how to play my guitar, I can't play my guitar the same way Joe will play. I can learn how to play piano, but not the same way Bridget will play. I can sing, but it may not be the same way we part. I can be able to organize people, but not the same way they, me as Loretta would do. So because people are unique, we are different. So you ought to keep it. You can destroy someone's gift or even destroy a person that does not give you that gift. That's what Thomas Aquinas will put us. Always remember that. We should always remember. Second, the standards of love for God is not just winners and losers. God does not define us as winners and losers. But in the standard of God's love, we all can win together. 
we all can win together. Someone can have a gift, a talent, even a potential I see in that person. That person can still have it, and I can still be able to do what? To have it. And then use it differently. So it's not a winner, a win and lose. It's a win-win before God. That's the standards of love. Thirdly, that we should not be unnecessarily competing with people with resentfulness and rivalry. But the best thing is always look at your past. Don't be comparing over comparing yourself with people. You don't need to do that. People are different. So when you begin to compare yourself, there was a lady who would always come to me comparing, oh, her life is this, oh, her life is this, oh, her life is this. And one day I asked her, you keep on comparing yourself um, with other people, but there's a group of persons you have never compared yourself with. And he asked me, who are those? I said, the dead. Because there are some of your age mates and classmates who are gone. But God has kept you alive. So no, why not compare yourself with those ones also? So there is no need. That we should, in Thomas Aquinas understanding, we should always seek to improve on our own past. Nobody is perfect. So there are some imperfections. And if we keep on trying to improve on them again and again, then our own abilities and potentials, we keep on coming up. And then we keep on strengthening ourselves. And that's what we have come to celebrate. It's like saying, leave, and let's leave. I pass another person, I give another person a chance, I don't have ill feelings, and I'm not going to destroy anyone. Then the owner of the, of the vineyard would ask, are you envious? And then the question comes back, are we envious because someone has those kind of gifts that we do not have? We can still prosper. We don't need to destroy other people. Standards of love. There is this, I came across a story in a village. They're in a typical village with competition where everybody knew, would know everyone. So that there was a time we had a porter who knew how to mold very good verses. And everybody loved him, talked about him. Then suddenly, there was this washerman who knew, came forcefully in the village, who clean everything, very good at washing everything. And his firm started growing. And the porter didn't like it, was looking for a way to destroy this man. He went to the king in a village and told the king, the king, do you know what? Make a feast. And let the washerman wash your elephant so that this elephant, you will dress, wash this elephant, dress it, and let the elephant be right there in the middle of your people. It, that would be wonderful. And do you know what? The washerman was a dwarf, a very short man that would not be able to wash this elephant. So they, they told the washerman that was his own task. Time was going. Time was going very fast. This washerman was not able to do that, wouldn't be able to wash this huge elephant. He thought to himself and told the king, the king, do you know what? The only way for me to wash this elephant is that I have a container large enough, a vessel, to contain the elephant inside. Then the king said, how are we going to get it? He said, we have a porter in town. Let the porter mold the big vessel for me to be able to wash this elephant. That was the hardest job for the porter. He made the first vessel. As soon as the elephant climbed into it, everything was broken down in pieces. He went back, time was going. He made the second one broken. He made the third one broken. Time was running out, and the feast was close by. Remember the words of the psalm in Psalm 57, verse 9 tells us, The dog a pit in my path and have fallen in it themselves. Never go out to destroy. When you attempt to destroy people, you may end up, it may end up being you inside that pit. That's what the psalm says. But the standards of God's godly living is standards of love that we have good will towards other people and not go after them. And when we have good will, always look at yourself. And the catechism, lastly, will tell us that once we are not contented, which means there is a certain level of inferiority that we are feeling inside, we should not have it. But have confidence in your God that, yes, God loves me. 
God is generous. I don't need to be envious of the other person. But the same way God has blessed that person, God is going to do what? To bless me. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. I eat with surprise you what the Lord has done. When upon like billows you are tempestous, when you are discouraged thinking all is gone, count your many blessings, name them one by one. I eat with surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. I eat with surprise you what the Lord has done. May the good Lord bless his words in our hearts. Amen. I believe one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. God is visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, who came back for all ages, God from God, life from God, who God from God, begotten God made, and substantial with the Father, with him all things were made, for our sake, for our salvation, he came out from heaven. And the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. The sake was crucified on the point of his pilot. So for that I was buried. And the first thing in the day, I was the scriptures. The sake of the heaven, the sake of the right hand of the Father. He will come again in order to carry the living to the dead. This came out of heaven again. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who will all give up life, who persist from the fire of the Son. Who the Father and the Son is the Lord of the Lord of God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and the Holy Catholic and the Holy of Saints, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered around the altar of the Lord, we bring our prayers to God in faith. For all who have sought and found the Lord in his holy church, and for those who are in the process of finding their way, let us pray the Lord. For political and national leaders, and for all who assist them in exercising their authority, may God open their hearts to his guidance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those who seek to help them, may the Lord provide for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who cannot be physically present with us today in this sacred assembly, may the Lord's peace come upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us considering a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may the God who calls upon all to the to union with him grant them peace in their discernment let us pray to the lord for all who have died may they experience the eternal joy of the heavenly kingdom let us pray to the lord gracious god these are our own prayers those spoken and unspoken you know how best to answer us Grant our heart desires through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn this morning is number 649, Seek the Lord. We'll do the B version. <laughs>
my dearly beloved, that the good Lord may accept our sacrifice. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and why in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May we wave one another as a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The 
Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we be seated. Just a quick few announcements before Richard comes up there. We need uh, two volunteers for the collection. They need to be 18 years or older, not from the same family. If you see our soldiers back there, they'll walk you through that. If you use a missalette, put it on the table under the clock so we can sanitize them for the next service. When you leave, please. And our final hymn when we get there will be number 400. To you, O God, I lift up my soul. Richard. Good morning. Very short today. Uh, Religious Ed starts next week here in the chapel. And I'll be meeting with the teachers and aides uh, right after Mass to hand out some of the informa information and materials that they need. Also, registration is still open if you want to uh, sign up your child for religious ed. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming to our celebration today. In a very special way, I thank all those who helped who make this day a success by contributing in one way or the other. We start thanking all the members of the choir. Thank you, members of the choir. And our choir is growing. We have a new drummer boy also, Father Philip. <laughs> drummer boy, may we put our hands together for him. <laughs> so the choir is growing. We thank the NCOs. Thank you also everyone for coming here. Do we have visitors here, those who are visiting with us? What about those leaving us? May we stand so that uh, it's good. During this time, we are not able to talk, but we pray with them and for them. May, you, may we stretch our hands towards them and pray. Gracious God, be with your children. Go before them the same way you went with the Israelites and be behind them to protect them. We know you are leading them onto a path of goodness. May your goodness, mercy fill their lives and follow them as they depart from here. May we continue with our fraternity. We ask this in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you, we appreciate you stay with us and we ask that you continue to be a blessing to other people where you are going. Since we can't talk, we can't listen. <laughs> are there anybody here, is there any person here celebrating birthday? Birthday this week? We have one. Oh, bad. An anniversary? Anybody, anniversary? So continue praying for people. May we stretch our hands to pray for her also. Gracious God, continue to, pr to protect and guide your daughter as she lives graciously unto you, O oh Lord. We commend her life today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Is there anything we have left? I hope we have thanked. Hmm? Oh, he's saying I should ask deployments. So thank you for reminding anybody. Mm -hmm. With that being said, oh, <laughs> and those who are living, may you stand so that we pray for you, you see, he, so he remembered. May we pray for him as he leaves. Stretch your hands again. It's good that we join our prayers together. Gracious God, continue to protect your child. Into your hands we submit him and commend him. You are a God who takes care of us and we know that you will lead him safely to and fro to come back and meet and rejoice with us. We ask this in faith 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So any other thing, I want to be sure. There was a time as soon as I went out, I discovered that uh, someone wanted prayers and we didn't do. I, don't, I want to make sure today that we don't make that mistake again. So thank you everyone for coming. We hope to see you next week. You all have a good week. As I was wishing you that, I remember something. I, something told me I was missing something. Next week, Father Naprosky is coming here. Will be in this. Will come for mass with us, and that will be his final week here. Next week, Father Naprosky is coming for mass. So you tell others, those who want to wish him well and say goodbye to him, he is going to be here next week. That was what I was trying to remember. Since that something told me something was wrong in my memory, but thank God I remember that. I remember also RCIA. If you want RCIA during the week and you can't get Rowena, you can always get Father Philip or you get me, and we we'll try to link you up with them, um, with Dick and Richard. Don't forget RCIA. Don't forget RCIA, and you tell others also. You all have a good week. May we stand. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank Michael for your Sit still on the spirits. Oh, God, we are seeking the of souls. Amen.